Okay, so I've got, I hope you've got your coffee ready as well because now what I'm going to tell you is going to change the way you look at coins altogether. To start with, let's give you an analogy. You know, like there is the stock market while investing in stocks, you watch out for these things. You see the credentials of the company, you see the balance sheet of the company, expansion plans and all of that, market cap, etc., etc. So in the crypto world, how do you reach different coins? Now, it's not that difficult if you are reading the fundamentals of the coin, right? So make it easy for you to understand what we've done is we've got four basic pillars that should be the basis of how you're reading coins. So let's start with our first filler. What is the coin's purpose? Now, unlike what a lot of people think, not all coins are the same. Every coin is designed for a specific purpose. For example, Bitcoin is designed to function as a currency. It is created to allow online payments to be made directly without any financial institution. Ethereum, on the other hand, goes beyond that. It just doesn't decentralize the banks, but it has decentralized apps, services. You can build a smart contracts, NFTs, and a lot of other things on that platform. And this is because the technology is slightly different. And it is also faster, quicker, more scalable. Another popular coin is Tether. Now, this is what is called a stable coin. And it is just that. It is more stable because it is tied to another asset. In Tether's case, the asset is the US dollar. So one Tether is designed to be worth one US dollar. And this also means there is less fluctuation and less volatility in this space. Now, wondering how do I know all this? Well, that's because I just read the white paper of these coins. And so should you. What is the white paper? Well, it is simply a document that outlines why the coin was generated and what is the problem the coin intends to solve. This is the most important pillar in the entire explainer. But having understood that, let's move to the second one, which is about the background and credentials of the team behind the coin. Now, Bitcoin is an anomaly since nobody really knows who Santoshi Nakamoto is. But that's not the case with several other cryptocurrencies. So when you are thinking about investing in a, to- uh, in a coin altogether, look into who are the people backing it. Who are the co-founders? Who wrote the white paper? Again, for example, many major organizations are experimenting with Ethereum's blockchain. A consortium called Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, which includes companies like Microsoft, JP Morgan. They are developing uses of the Ethereum blockchain. Again, a company called Tetha Limited controls Tetha. It is responsible for its management, its supply, keeping the reserves, issuing tokens, and thus maintaining a stable price. Once you are convinced about pillar number one, pillar number two, move to pillar number three, which is the market cap of the coin. Now, market capitalization or market cap is the total value of the coins that have been mined or generated. Its calculation is quite simple. You just multiply the number of coins in circulation by the current market price of a single coin. Now, see, this is important. Why? Because price alone of a single coin should not be your deciding factor on whether or not you're investing in that crypto. A lot of people I know who are new to crypto might get tempted to buy a coin that's at a low price. But that's not advisable. Market cap will help you see if the price has been inflated. For instance, if you see a coin with low daily volume but a high market capitalization, it's most likely to be manipulated. This manipulation, by the way, is called pump and dump. Now, pumping and dumping, that's a new thing that you've learned today, really cool to use as well. So, thank you. But what exactly is it? It's when developers actually buy a large quantity, so they are pumping the price. But as soon as the price reaches the peak, they dump the coin. So talking about PND brings me to the all-important pillar number four. And this is going to be important because this is your support group. This is your coin family. This is your community. Now, remember, I told you that trading volume, the higher the volume, the more solid base you have. All that means that when more people are involved, the coin community is thriving. There will be better returns. There will be more thriving as well. Because the coin community will be built by people who believe in the coin, believe in its future, 
this will have people like investors, developers, beginners, old timers, everybody e-connecting to discuss what exactly are the various issues with the coin and what exactly again is it that it plans to achieve. Now, unlike the process of writing a code, the creation of a crypto community is not an algorithm, remember, the crypto community is a living phenomenon. It's the heart and soul of what keeps these coins running and thus all innovations and that is happening in this space will come out of here. So I hope you made notes over there because these four pillars will go a long way in identifying good coins, potential coins, thriving coins from all the bad ones. Mm -hmm.